Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and this is the final video in the AC Electricity series where I'm looking at a question from an NCA paper. This is from the 2023 paper, and it's question three. So Kate here builds a circuit with a signal generator. So we've got an AC um, voltage source set at 200 hertz, an ammeter, which measures the uh, current, a light bulb is our resistor, and capacitor in the series. So this is an uh, RC circuit, resistor capacitor circuit. And the capacitor is 120 microfarads, so micros 10 to the minus 6. Show that the capacitor reactance is 663 and calculate the impedance. Remember that impedance is like the total resistance of the circuit. So let's start with what they've told us to do. Show the capacitive uh, reactance. So I've got a formula for that, which is uh, 1 over omega C. I've got C, which is 1.2 by 10 to the minus 6, but I don't have uh, omega. So omega is the um, angular frequency, so it's 2 times pi times 200 hertz, and that gives me uh, this number here, 1,200 radians per second. So now I can put that back in the formula I was aiming for, and 1 divided by 1,256, and remember the 1 1.2 microfarads is 1 1.2 to the minus 6, where our calculator spits out 663, like they've asked for. Cool. Now determine the total impedance of the circuit. So I'm just going to remember my phasor diagram first, just to get my head in the right space. Um, R is always out to the right, and um, the capacitor lags down there like that. That helps me to get my impedance triangle. Right Now the capacitant reactance points down, but I've put it head to to um, tip to tail here so I could add them to find the total, which is what they're after. So we're going to do this total adding like this, and it's um, a triangle, so we use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and here I've got this r squared plus this x c squared equals my hypotenuse z squared. So let's put the values in, 663 and 15 is my resistor here. My calculator says that's what the z squared is. And when I find the square root of that, I still get very close to 663 because in reality, this is a very, very big number and this is a very, very small number. And so when you actually draw a triangle like that, you'll find that the hypotenuse is very similar in size to one of the sides. Um, and I'm just going to round that back off to 663. So that was the first question and it was worth the merit. Kate increases the frequency of the signal generator from the 200 hertz to 20 kilohertz, that's 20,000 hertz and then to 200 kilohertz, that's 200,000. Give an in-depth explanation of Kate will, what Kate will observe in the circuit at each frequency compared to her observation in part A. Consider the effect of the unchanging frequency on impedance, the current, and the brightness. Okay, well let's do the first one first, 200 kilohertz. So we know that um, at any point, the capacitance of the capacitor is equal to one over omega C. Omega, remember, is um, 2 pi times the frequency. So the reactance of the capacitor depends on the frequency. Right? But it's an inverse relationship. So when I increase that frequency, and I'm doing it by 100 times, because I'm going from 200 to 20,000, that means I decrease this number by 100 times. That number gets smaller. Because I've decreased one of the reactances, basically one of the resistances, my total resistance, or my total impedance as it's called, goes down as well. And this is now just a level two problem. V equals I, what used to be R, V equals I times Z. Rearrange that to say I equals V over Z. They are inverse their relationship. So if I decrease my impedance, I increase I. There's more current in the circuit. And when there's more current in the circuit, we're going to get a brighter bulb. And the way you show that is P equals I squared R. That's one of the power formulas you met in level two. Increasing I means increasing power, therefore increasing brightness. So I increase the 20 thousand increases in brightness now to 200 kilohertz is just going to be the same it's exactly the same argument i might even just say look this is repeats again and i increase again except going from 20 kilohertz to 200 kilohertz is only 10 times bigger not the original 100 times bigger so the bulb's still brighter but just not by as much and that was worth an excellence for doing that all right, this next one's obviously an achieved question. Um, Kate adds a 20, oh, 0.2 Henry inductor. The signal generator is set at 2000 hertz, the lamp is off, and as she slowly decreases the frequency, the lamp suddenly glows brightly. 
and then it goes off at lower frequency. Calculate the frequency at which the glow balls are blo blows the brightest. This is looking at resonance. Okay, so the bulb is the brightest when we get to this resonance value. And at resonance, um, your voltage over the capacitor and the voltage over the inductor are equal and opposite each other. And there's a formula given in your formula sheet which looks like this, the resonant frequency. So I've got all those values, 0.2 henrys and 1.2 by 10 to the minus 6 farads. Chuck it in my formula, do the calculation, I get 325 hertz. That wasn't achieved. Explain how the inductor affects the impedance of the circuit and why there's one frequency at which the impedance equals the resistance of the circuit, causing the lamp to go brightly. So this is just asking to explain the last question. Talk about resistance. Talk about what you are not resistance, resonance. What do you understand of resonance? So I'm just going to say, look, for first, the inductor reactance is always out of phase with the capacitor reactance. It can look like this. Now, at resonance, and let's make sure I've used that word, at the resonant frequency, those two reactances are now equal and opposite. So they, they were both, the, before they were opposite, but now they're equal and opposite. And when they're equal and opposite, they can cancel out. So I can draw them cancelling out. When they cancel out, right, at that frequency, the total impedance is just what's left. It's equal to R. This is the minimum value for Z. Um, because it's the minimum value, we get the maximum for I, and P equals I squared R once more the bulb will glow at its brightest. And that was the second excellence question. Right, I hope that's been helpful.